Hi, my name is Karen Fabian and I am the founder of Bare Bones Yoga. Welcome to my next video. We're going to do a brief practice today focused on inner and outer thighs, which kind of translates to inner and outer hips because of the proximity of the thigh bone to the hip joint. So before we begin, I just want to kind of give you a couple, uh, a few pointers or tips here anatomically speaking. So we're talking about, from an inner thigh perspective, muscles that bring our thighs closer together, which anatomically is called adduction, A-D-D-U-C-T-I-O-N. And so these are muscles that run on the inside of the thigh bone or the femur, and they bring the thigh bones closer together, or adduct them. And there's a lot of different muscles that do this. One of them is a really big adductor called the adductor magnus, just FYI. And then, uh, there are muscles that turn the thighs out, or in this case, externally, instead of internally, externally rotate the hip joint. And so these are muscles, if you look at the back of the skeleton, that would start on the uh, outer edge here of the pelvis, or really more around the sitting bone, and they would connect to the femur at the top. And so when they contract or shorten, they would have the action of turning the femur outward or rotating the hip joint outward, or again, using the proper term, externally rotating the hip. So the interesting thing about muscles is that they work in pairs. So the muscle doing the action is the agonist, and the muscle resisting that action is the antagonist, just kind of like in a play. So when we are opening the hip, we're working the muscles that do that, and we're stretching the muscles that do the opposite or bring the thighs closer together, and vice versa. When we bring the thighs closer together, we're shortening those muscles or working them, and we're stretching the muscles that turn the thighs out. So this can be helpful when we come to different postures where people typically say, oh, this is really hard for me to get into. And the last pose we're going to do in this practice today is half pigeon on the ground. And this is a posture where one leg is turned out, one leg is straight or even internally rotated a little bit. So we stretch and work opposite sides and then we switch and do the other. And we'll do some prep work beforehand so that by the time we get there, we've got a good both stretch and strengthen going on both sides of the body, both hips. All right, so let's begin. Coming to the top of your mat, standing with your feet together, reach your arms up to the sky, and then drop your palms down. Let's add more breath. Inhale, reach up, and exhale down. All right, so coming into chair pose, inhale up, and then sitting low. And you'll notice here the thighs are squeezing inward, so we're using the muscles that draw the thighs or adduct the thighs close together. Bring your hands to your heart, take a breath, forward fold. Open your feet about hip width apart, and here focus as you fold on a little bend in the knee so you can get a nice fold at your hip joint. The head is relaxed. Grab onto your elbows, and as you root down into your feet, take your inner thighs back. So you're really getting that sense of turning the thighs inward. And they're not necessarily squeezing inward, they're more rotating inner thighs back. Drop your hands to the ground, take an inhale, exhale out. All right, inhale, reach up all the way, and then hands to heart center. All right, bringing your feet together, we'll do one sun A. Inhale, reach up, exhale, fold. Bend the knees slightly, inhale halfway up, exhale to plank. Hold your plank for a moment, draw your belly in, stack the shoulders over the wrists, and roll your inner thighs up. So you do have the sense here of the inner thighs moving towards each other, even though there's space between, as if you had a yoga block between your thighs. Set your gaze slightly forward, push forward, and lower down halfway or all the way to the ground. Flip your feet flat, upward dog. Stack your shoulders directly over your wrists. Take a big breath, and then downward facing dog. Exhale. Pedal it out a little bit, just to kind of get a little stretch going through your hamstrings. And then slow down the movement, set your gaze back towards your toes, lift your sitting bones up. So here in downward dog, your inner thighs are rolling back, so you get that same inner thigh movement. 
Take a breath and exhale out. Now step your feet together. Lift your right leg up to the sky and keep your toes down. So again, it's this imaginary sense of moving the thighs, the inner thighs closer together. Step your right foot forward, crescent lunge, out to the right, keep the back heel up. Reach the arms up to the sky. So here, bring your hands to your heart for a moment and bend your back knee slightly. Draw your right hip back and move your left hip forward. And again, that sense of inner thighs moving towards each other. Reach your arms up again. Soften under your chest, draw your belly inward. Do not puff out like that. Take a big breath and then release your hands down, step to plank. Set your gaze slightly forward, push forward. Lower halfway down, heels pushing back. Upward dog, take a breath. Downward facing dog, exhale back. Bring your feet together. Left leg up to the sky, take a breath. Step your left foot forward and over to your left, reach up high. Bend your back knee a little bit, hands to your heart. Steer left hip back, right hip forward. Draw the belly in a little bit, soften under your chest. Take the arms up high, breathe in, and then exhale down to the ground. Step to plank. Set your gaze slightly forward, push forward. Lower halfway down, elbows and heels back. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Take a few breaths here. Take a full breath in. On your exhale, bend your knees, walk or jump to the front of the mat. Lift halfway up and fold. Reach up all the way. Take a breath. Bring your hands to your heart. Okay, so we're moving from internally rotating, we're moving the thighs closer and inner, inward towards each other, to external rotation as we see in Warrior Two. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, chair pose. Take a breath. Forward fold. Lift halfway up on the inhale. Step to plank pose and lower on the exhale. Upward dog, breathing in. Downward dog, breathing out. Bring your feet together. Take your right leg up again. And this time bend your knee and lift your thigh. So notice this is different than the other lift. This is the open hip. Step your right foot forward as far as you can, keeping the front knee over the heel, turn the back heel down. Warrior two pose, stretch out, arm to arm. So in this posture, this hip is open. This is turning open instead of inner, inward. Reverse the warrior, right arm up. Side angle lunge, right elbow to your thigh, top arm over your head. Take a big breath here. Release down, plank pose. Forward and lower, heels back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Feet together, left leg up. Bend the knee, open the hip. Warrior two, step to the lunge. Open wide. So now this hip is open, where on the other side it was more neutral or even turned in a little. Reverse the warrior, breathe in. Left elbow to thigh, exhale, side angle. Take one more breath and then release, plank pose. Chaturanga, low push up, inhale up, exhale back. Take a few breaths here. Take a big breath in. On your exhale, bend your knees, hop or walk forward. Lift halfway, fold down. Chair pose, reach up high. 
Fall forward to the ground. Halfway up, take a breath. Step to plank and lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Okay, let's put it together. Feet together, right leg up. Bend your knee, open your hip. Warrior two, step forward. Reverse your warrior, breathing in. Side angle lunge, breathing out. Reverse again, take a breath. And then low push up to the ground. Inhale up. Exhale back. Left foot forward, take it up, bend your knee. Warrior two. Reverse, breathe in. Side angle, breathing out. Reverse, breathe in. And then low push up to the ground. Inhale up. Exhale back. All right, from here, walk your feet forward to the front. Come up to standing, reach. And then hands at your heart. Okay, so we'll do two standing postures. One works more internal rotation and one works more external. So first is eagle pose, arms up high, right arm under left. Take your right leg on top of your left, bend your left knee. Now it's important here to hinge a little right through your hip so you're leaning slightly forward. Your thighs are moving close together, your right arm is under, but your shoulders are nice and relaxed. If it feels better, you can undo the wrap, just bring your arms towards each other. Sink a little more, reach up. Take your left arm under your right, your left leg on top. Hinge slightly forward. Keep your shoulders relaxed. A little lower. Stretch up high. Take a breath. And then hands at your heart. All right. Now coming into tree pose, pull the right foot up to the inner left thigh or below the knee on the shin. Open your knee by working from your hip, using that joint as the prime mover of turning this thigh bone out to the side. Take your arms up tall, set your gaze, press foot to thigh and thigh to foot. Take a big breath and then release. Other side, walk your foot up, find your balance. Draw the belly in, soften under the chest, take a breath, and then hands to heart center. Okay, bringing your feet together at the top of the mat. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold forward. Lift halfway up, step to plank pose. Moving through low push-up, upward dog, take a breath and downward facing dog. All right, feet together, right leg up. Keep the toes facing the ground. That's your closed or internal hip. Warrior one, step forward, reach up. So here the hips are neutral, right? So you're facing the center of the mat by angling that back foot slightly in. So we're not really turned out or turned in at all. Reach up high, take a breath, and then release your hands down. Moving through low push-up to downward dog. Feet together, left leg up. Step to warrior one. As you reach up high, if you feel more open through your hip, turn your back foot a little further forward to center your hip to the front. Right hip moving forward, left hip moving back. Reach up high, take a breath, and then release down and through the sequence. Okay. 
Okay. From here, walking your feet halfway up your mat, turn your toes out. Coming into a squat. Right? So this one's pretty uh, easy to see that both hips are open evenly. You can also sit on a block if that feels better. As you're rooting to your feet, use your arms for a little leverage. Open your inner thighs out. Lift up through the crown of your head. A couple breaths here. All right, now reaching your arms up to the sky. From leg strength, press up and then walk your feet towards each other. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take a breath and exhale. All right. We're going to do one more posture on the feet. This one's a little bit challenging, but we've done some warm up to warming uh, to warm up the hips. So this is standing half pigeon. Take your right foot and hold it in your hand. Keep your bottom foot straight and place your upper foot right above the knee. Now remember, it's easier to open your hip from the hip than just moving the knee outward. So imagining, just like you see in the skeleton there, the ball and socket nature of the hip joint. And using that to let this outer thigh bone open, the knee will follow along. Keeping your upper foot active and flexed, bring your hands to your heart. Hinge right from your hips. Hold for three breaths. And then bringing feet flat, reach up. Hands to your heart. Other side. Grab onto your left ankle. Place it right above your knee. Relax through your left hip. Bring your hands at your heart. Hinge forward from your hips. Three breaths. Release the foot, stand up, reach up, and then hands to heart center. Okay, good. Coming back to the front of your mat, Stretch arms up high, inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, exhale, plank and lower. Upward facing, take a breath, downward facing dog. All right, our last posture, pigeon pose, drawing the right knee forward. Now notice I'm not taking the knee way past the hip. That can create a little bit of compression around your sacrum, your lower back. So I'm placing the knee right in front of the hip and then stretching this back leg all the way back. <clears throat> what tends to happen in this pose a lot is people will shift one way or the other. So you're trying to find that centering. And then lowering down, sometimes it's uh, nice to support the head with a block. You can put your head in a block. So again, going back to the anatomy, this hip is opening, this hip is closed. So as we're working here, we're contracting the muscles that begin right around our sitting bone and connect to the thigh bone, and they open that hip open to the side. Take a couple breaths here. Notice if the shoulders are up by the ears and let the shoulders relax. And then bringing yourself back up on your hands, step back to downward dog. Evening it out, other side, bring the left knee forward and down. And one thing that I'd like to point out here is we never want to leverage the knee joint. Sometimes in our zest to try to bring the shin more forward, we leverage the knee before we come down. And we never want to do this. I can't tell you how many times I see people do this in practice. We want to come down first and get comfortable on the ground. And then if you wish to move the shin a little more forward, you can, but you don't need to. Remember, the further forward the shin goes, oftentimes the more stress on the inside of the knee. So we want to kind of work compassionately with the body. 
rather than using this ideal in our head of what the posture should look like or maybe something we heard. Coming on down, take three breaths. Coming up onto the hands, rock onto your left hip and bring both feet together at the ground. So this is seated bound angle or Baddha Konasana, grabbing onto the feet, lift up through the crown of the head and forward fold. And then releasing, stretching the legs out. Taking a moment to rest in Shavasana. And then rolling over to the right side and making your way up to seated. Obviously, we like our rest, our final pose to be longer, but for purposes of the video here, we'll, we'll shorten it up. So, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it interesting. Remember to check out my website, barebonesyoga.com, for interesting blog posts. Many of my blog posts are themed around the anatomy behind the practice. And also, please consider joining me in Mexico in May for a yoga trip. Namaste.